unmanned vehicles. Synthetic organisms. Is the military merging human DNA and artificial intelligence to create killing machines that will one day rule the world? Whatever ability or function that the human body has, there is a scientist somewhere trying to make a robot do the exact same thing. Does the government already have a real-life Skynet that is capable of running a war with no human intervention? Right now we're facing a free-for-all. There are military contractors, mad scientists, scientists driven to make money, and they're all trying to create the most efficient machines that will make human beings completely expendable. Tonight, science fiction becomes science fact as the fast approaching rise of the machines is unsealed. What is the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. 1917, World War I. Trenches scar the face of Europe as Allied and enemy forces dig into the ground. In an attempt to gain the upper hand, the United States Army secretly rushes to manufacture an unpiloted airplane known as the Kettering Bug. It is the first military drone to ever hit the skies, carrying 180 pounds of explosives with a target range of 75 miles. Aviation was in its infancy, yet we're already trying to figure out how to use this technology as a weapon. In the 1930s, Russia develops the Teletank, a mechanized monster with a built-in flamethrower and machine gun. In the 1940s, the Nazis roll out the Goliath Tracked Mine, a deadly miniature remote-controlled tank, the first baby steps of the rise of the machines. Seventy years later, the U.S. now has the largest and most powerful army of unmanned drones in the world. Technology has completely changed war as we fought it for the last couple thousand years. Now we can fight those battles and take another man's life without ever putting ourselves into harm's way. And much of the technological progress can be linked to one organization, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. DARPA was created in 1958 by President Dwight D. Eisenhower after the launch of Sputnik by the Soviet Union in 1957. Its purpose was simple. It was aimed to research all those highly advanced scientific discoveries and take the next step in regards to technology. DARPA has been critical in the development of NASA, the Internet, and the stealth bomber. But that's just the tip of the technological iceberg. DARPA is a very open agency because they do talk a lot about what they are researching, what they're investigating, and some of the scientific advances that they have taken. But if they'll tell us that much, you have to ask yourself, what aren't they telling you? One product of DARPA research is the Nano Hummingbird. The one ounce flyer can move backwards, forwards, and hover in one place. With funding from DARPA, Big Dog was developed to carry heavy loads over rough terrain. These things are real. They're not fiction. Luckily, these are ours, at least for the time being. Highbot Snake is an amphibious device that's mobile on solid ground and in the water. As science makes these advances, they start creating robots that do very small things. One can carry heavy loads, another jumps very high. When you start putting all of that technology together, all of a sudden you have a super soldier, you have an ultimate machine. 
And then, there are the drones. One in three military aircraft operates without a human pilot. And their numbers increase every day. In the beginning, there was a man in the middle of Nevada or D.C. or even just outside the battlefield that was controlling this piece of machinery. But now, as technology advances, these machines can actually fly themselves. As machines begin to outnumber the human soldier, will the technology we are creating to assist us turn against us? Right now, the intelligent machines are on our side because they're programmed to be. If you think the coming robot apocalypse is going to be nation versus nation, think again. Many of the machines most likely to stage an uprising are already in our homes. It's crazy to think that these devices can't be used against us. And if something can be used against us, they will be used against us. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Every year, the machines we make get one step closer to replacing us all together. But instead of being wary of robots, Americans just embrace them all the more. Unsealed Case Files. Smart Toys. 1998, the American International Toy Fair in New York City. A fuzzy, talking figure soon becomes the must-have Christmas gift of the season. The Furby is the first successful attempt to sell a robot to the domestic market. Prices for the electronic toy soon top $100 on the resale market. Furby would come and it would only know the language Furbish. Kids would teach it how to learn in English, learn words. The Furby automatically records bits and pieces of its owner's conversations. Consumers are fascinated. The National Security Administration bans the toy from their offices. Simply by listening to us, it was becoming intelligent. And shouldn't the NSA ban give us a clue about the path we're going down? One year later, the Sony robot dog, Ibo, further solidifies the consumer's love of a robot companion. There's a huge difference between remote control robots and autonomous robots. Autonomous robots don't need human interaction. They can literally make a decision for itself and be programmed to completely live its robotic life by its own. With just minor adjustments, these robot dogs can take and send photographs wirelessly. A few more tweaks allow several to work together as a soccer team. They're learning, they're working together, and they're sending photos of their surroundings to people. How is that not setting off alarm bells? Just one year later, in 2000, Honda introduces the first humanoid robot for home use. They name him Azimo for advanced steps in innovative mobility. His stated goal? To assist humans with physical limitations. The idea and the concept was there that one day we would rely on these robots to help us with our everyday tasks. From welding to vacuuming, from performing delicate surgery, to making noodles. There seems to be no limit to what a robot can learn to do. And they're talking to each other. My Roomba has a USB port and a Bluetooth. I, I, who does it need to communicate with? We openly share our personal info via social networks. We willingly allow our every move to be tracked by GPS. Imagine an artificial intelligence software utilizing all that data. It can literally map your entire life. A billion Facebook users on a billion smartphones. Each cell phone and profile containing hundreds of bits of information about you and all your contacts. If you look at our technological infrastructure, our banking information, our power grids, our telephones, uh, they're all connected in some way. That's a digital Armageddon waiting to happen. Intelligent robots and computers have been gathering data on mankind for years. 
Now we're serving it up to them on a silver platter. First, we like the interconnectedness. We think it's great. But pretty soon, we become dependent on these devices. Pretty soon, we can't live without these devices. And that's the whole point. Scientists program the most dangerous robots not to harm their creators. But computers, just like the people they may someday replace, are subject to illness. The common cold has mutated itself over the years to make sure that not every pill or antibiotic that we're given will combat it. Well, same is true in the digital world. Unsealed case file. The Stuxnet virus. 2010. Somewhere in an unknown location, computer hackers and engineers get together to perfect the most effective cyber weapon yet known to man. The Stuxnet virus was a virus that appeared in 2010. It infected millions of users worldwide. Most of the damage done by this virus was done to computers inside the Iranian nuclear research facilities aimed to enrich uranium. And it's believed that years were taken away from the Iranian scientists in regards to their research due to this virus. The Stuxnet virus showed the world that a virus, a computer code, could turn the machines against the very people who were using the machines. If you think that can't happen to us, you're making a grave mistake. Every day, the human race gives up a little more humanity for the sake of convenience. Direct deposit for your paychecks. Automated customer service lines. Smartphones that do what a personal assistant used to do. It seems as though people no longer need people at all. Coming up, how will machines ultimately rule mankind? By eventually merging with them. You look at the stuff they're doing today and it's like science and science fiction are indistinguishable. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Since the Industrial Revolution, mankind has invented machines to do nearly anything a man can do. But now, engineers and scientists are taking things a step further. Unsealed Case File. Man-Machine Hybrids. Remember the six million dollar man? It's not fiction anymore. Battery powered exoskeletons become one with the wearer, allowing a human soldier to double or triple his strength and endurance. Exoskeleton battle gear is a fantastic help to our combat troops. But what happens when you don't need the human being inside the exoskeleton anymore? If you look at what we're capable of today, it's like science and science fiction are indistinguishable. And scientists have more fully integrated man-machine crossovers already in place. Eyes, hands, arms, even synthetic human flesh. If a person has it, somewhere an engineer is figuring out how to give it to a robot. Biodesign, a new project at DARPA, is making the impossible possible. It intends to create synthetic organisms that will be programmed to live indefinitely. Not only have we created a robot, we're giving it the gift of immortality. If you start to program it to be self-replicating, it goes out puts another copy of itself together, programs it, and sends it off into the universe. That one becomes two, the two becomes four, four becomes eight, so on and so forth. In a very short amount of time, these probes could, in theory, start to take over the world. Of course, robots only do what they're programmed to do. But what happens when they're programmed to fool us? Unsealed case file, the Turing test. 1950, Alan Turing, one of the fathers of modern computing, poses a simple question. Can machines think? The field of artificial intelligence is born. The Turing test was created to determine whether or not an artificial intelligence software could act human-like. 
The test would involve three different subjects. The judge, a computer, and an actual human. The judge would communicate and send messages to the computer via text and messages to the human and receive a response. Based on the response, if the judge couldn't figure out which one was human, it would pass the Turing test. And computers just keep getting better. I don't think it's very hard for a machine to actually convince the human that it's human. Since the advent of social networking, a whole new artificial entity has emerged, the social bot. There are computer programs and scripts out there that traverse the net and think for themselves, can hack into websites, can actually communicate and send messages with you. If you're on Facebook or some type of social network platform, all of a sudden you get a message from somebody. Sometimes there's not a human on the other end. How soon before the robots that can fool us become the robots that can rule us? It's more likely than you think. What might happen if software programmers are able to provide that power, that ability for computer-driven robots to think, to make decisions on their own without input from their human creators? The rise of thinking, synthetic, Immortal organisms could spell the end of the human race. So what happens when the robots rise up and take technology away from mankind? Everything shuts down. Your cell phone doesn't work. Your GPS doesn't work. Your car doesn't even work because it's computer driven. Nothing in your life that works by computer operates. And that could only be the beginning of the end. A massive meltdown creates worldwide panic. Satellites go offline. Power grids fail. Water supplies disappear. The Earth goes dark. Your phone, your computer, your car. They're all part of the matrix. The drones that think for themselves, the weapons that basically define their own targets. What happens when they turn on us? Thankfully, the time when machines take over for mankind still lies in the future. But you'll never believe what they're already doing today. When we return, the mind-blowing truth about robots with a license to kill. When a machine's given the authority to decide to kill a human, we call that the kill clause. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. The time to act is now. There are three simple steps you can take to unseal the truth. Follow on Twitter. Follow the Unsealed Twitter feed to receive breaking news of the latest conspiracies as they develop. Tell your story. What did you see that you shouldn't have? The government's known about it all along. Why has nobody told us? Upload stories and pictures to our interactive map. Join the movement. Get the unsealed bracelet and the unique code hidden underneath to access exclusive content. Stop living in the dark. It is definitely coming this way. Get involved in the fight to unseal the truth. Now. Due to the graphic nature of some images, viewer discretion is advised. Perhaps the most disturbing development in state-of-the-art robotics is also the most deadly. It's known as the Kill Clause. A 2008 report prepared for the U.S. Navy outlines its intention. Imagine the face of warfare with autonomous robotics, mobile machines that can make decisions, such as fire upon a target without human intervention, can replace the soldier in an increasing range of dangerous missions. Will these devices actually be able to make kill decisions based on the actions of the human beings they're targeting? We can't be sure that that's not already happening. Robots have been designed to think, to feel, to replicate, to fool us, and most dangerously, to kill us. It's not a matter of if the machines will take over, but only when. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. America secretly experimenting on humans? Are the diseases that have ravaged the human population man-made? 
have government scientists created real life monsters that can no longer be contained. People described it as a cross between a dog and a raccoon and even a sea turtle. The answers to these frightening questions may be found on Plum Island in Suffolk County, New York, an animal disease research center that some say is the real life island of Dr. Moreau. Tonight, we expose a sinister plan that could be in the works to expand this facility across the nation and bring the horrors of bioterror right to your front door. Join us as the secrets of Plum Island are unsealed. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Mutants, monsters, and abominations leave us mystified from the jungles of Africa to the backyards of America. Many are products of science, sometimes in the pursuit of good. Others reveal the evil done behind closed doors. East Hampton, New York, 2008. At the island's northern tip in Montauk, the beach resort hamlet is enjoying a busy tourist season. But then, a grisly discovery turns a day of fun into a day of terror. It happens when a 26-year-old woman and her three friends stumble across something that looks like a creature from a Hollywood horror movie. Unlike any known living being, it defies all laws of nature. And to this day, it has never been identified. The Montauk monster, is it myth? Was it real? People described it as a cross between a dog and a raccoon and even a sea turtle. It seemed like every part of nature played some type of part in the creation of whatever this was. In the weeks that follow, news media and cryptozoologists examining the photographs report theories from the simple. Some say it was simply a bloated raccoon. To the otherworldly. But others claim that it was an extraterrestrial. <laughs> What's underneath that skull thing? Is that the brain? Could be an alien. But to the residents of this Long Island town, the answer hits much closer to home. Just off the coast of New York and a stone's throw from Manta lies Plum Island. A top-secret animal disease research center haunted by rumors of genetic and biological experimentation. The accusation is, of course, denied. But in 2009, several events started to occur that show that there is much more going on on Plum Island than we know about. Another hybrid creature washes up on the beaches of Connecticut, followed by another in 2011. And within the span of a year, Two more on Long Island. Are these shocking real-life photographs a glimpse inside the secrets of Plum Island? There's absolutely no denying that this is real. This is happening time and time again. And now, as the alleged evidence piles up on the shores of the East Coast, a rather sudden announcement is made. The facility will be closing, but have the secrets of Plum Island already escaped? The secrecy surrounding Plum Island was so intense that scientists were being flown in and flown out. It was like the Area 51 for bioweapons. Exposing the history of Plum Island reveals chilling facts that suggest the facility may host the development of what could be catastrophic bio-warfare weapons. And that it might not only be animals they're experimenting on. 
This is the definition of biosafety. Level four, it involves diseases for which there is no cure. If one of those diseases would get out, it could be catastrophic. How did we build one of the deadliest germ labs on Earth? We didn't. We hired the Nazis to do it for us. Coming up next, ties to one of history's most evil regimes sheds light on Plum Island's true purpose and potential. This man was one of the Nazis' lead disease researchers during the war. And instead of prosecuting him, we offer him a job to run one of our facilities. And later, we uncover the upcoming location of the new Plum Island. But be warned, it's closer than you think. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. 90 miles from the 8.5 million people of New York City lies Plum Island, an animal research center which may house some of America's darkest secrets. And it all begins with a history reaching back to Nazi Germany. Unsealed case file. Operation Paperclip. Reims Island, Germany. Founded in 1910, it is the home of the world's oldest virological laboratory. And in World War II, was the home base of SS bioweapons research led by Nazi scientist Eric Traub. Under Heinrich Himmler, Traub investigated and experimented in unique forms of biowarfare for Hitler's army, including fatal diseases carried by biting or stinging insects. Traub discovered that with the use of an infectious disease, you could put that into a tick and use that as a weapon in warfare. If you were to do that, you can drop that on your enemy and never have to put your troops into harm's way. Traub and his bioweapons failed to turn the tides for the Nazis in World War II. But after the war, Russia and the U.S. gave top Nazi scientists immunity from war crimes in exchange for their services. One such specialist, Eric Traub. Eric Traub was picked up by the United States government under its program called Project Paperclip. This was a program in which various Nazi scientists were brought to the United States and put to use. Based on the design of Reams Island, the U.S. begins work on their own lab off the coast of New York. The Plum Island Animal Disease Research Center is opened in 1954. U.S. officials feel so strongly about Traub's knowledge and know-how of this type of research, they even offer him a job as the director of Plum Island. The one thing the Allies didn't want to happen was to have the Soviets get the jump on the Allies in infectious diseases. They smuggled Traub out of Berlin into the United States. The Nazis were brutal torturers and killers. Many of them were prosecuted at Nuremberg after the war, but not Eric Traub. In 1975, the small quiet town of Old Lyme, Connecticut is home to 7,500 residents just east of the Connecticut River and is ground zero for a frightening new affliction. An outbreak of fever, fainting, psychosis, delusional behavior, and paralysis. The infection is the first of its kind and it's named after the town. Lyme disease is a very devastating nerve disease. But most unsettling is how the disease spreads. Through ticks. And just 25 miles downwind from old Lyme, Connecticut, across Long Island Sound, is Plum Island. This is Eric Traub's calling card. Documents from the National Institute of Health show that Plum Island has experimented extensively with tick-borne diseases. Was this a case of Traub's infected ticks escaping the labs? Or even worse, was the spread of this disease intentional? While accusing a government facility of experimenting with disease on its own people may sound treasonous, it is, in fact, deadly accurate. 
1962, during the administration of John F. Kennedy, he initiated a project known as SHAD. Project SHAD is an example of what the American military did to its own personnel in testing bioweapons. It was one of many, many experiments done on our own troops. To this very day, we never really know who died as a result of Project SHAD and who didn't. American sailors stationed on Navy vessels are exposed to toxic nerve gas on 46 separate occasions. They got sick. They died, nobody knew about it, and to this day, the records of Project Shad are pretty much concealed. The history shows that the U.S. military and government has tested these agents on humans without their knowledge. The Tuskegee experiments with syphilis prove beyond any shadow of a doubt they will do it. And it's proven, it's factual, it's documented. But what about the experiments we don't know about? The ones that could be happening to any of us right now. Coming up next, biolab experiments on human beings might seem unthinkable until a body washes ashore. Plum Island, a very unusual body. It was found by security guards there at the facility, and it was said to not fully be human. And just because you don't live on the East Coast doesn't mean you're safe from an outbreak that's eating people alive. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. History has proven the U.S. government is willing to poison its own people with agents of bio-warfare. But is human experimentation actually being carried out on Plum Island? You have a base designed by a Nazi studying the effects of biological agents on animals and humans. Makes you wonder if humans themselves are being tested on Plum Island. What if the next Montauk monster is a human? In January 2010, some say he was. A six-foot-tall African-American male washed up on the shores of Plum Island. He was found by security guards, and it's said that he wasn't entirely human-like in appearance. He had these abnormally large fingers. To date, the case remains unsolved. But one detail in particular causes alarm. The victim was reported to have five holes drilled into his head. A potential sign of invasive brain surgery or experimentation. Why would the government experiment on human beings? Why would they take these biological agents and use them on unwilling human subjects? I think the answer might be that we have to see the effects of these biological agents before we implement them in war. If humans are being subjected to biological tests in this lab, how can it be kept secret? Unless they're not working alone. Unsealed case file. Biohazard outbreak. A 2007 study reported that 113 laboratories throughout the U.S. with bioweapon capabilities refused to disclose their operations to the public. This secrecy, a violation of the Geneva Convention, would normally not be allowed by federal law. But reports indicate amnesty was granted by President George W. Bush. Members of Congress and fellow Americans. It seems that the answer is pretty clear that the United States government is funding these programs, uh, testing biological agents. Whether they're testing them on animals or humans doesn't really matter. They're funding the research. Now, if you have more than 100 facilities that don't want to disclose what they're doing, you have to ask yourself, what is going on that we just don't know about? Syphilis in Alabama, yellow fever in Florida, Lyme disease in Connecticut, hantavirus in New Mexico, even bubonic plague. With disease labs spread across the country, experimentation is just one of the possible threats. A simple mistake could be the beginning of an epidemic that would devour us all. May 2012, 24-year-old Amy Copeland is hospitalized after injuring herself while ziplining over a river outside Atlanta, Georgia. 
what seems like a routine surgery quickly reveals a bacteria not only infecting her body, but killing it as it spreads quickly through her flesh. Once this, this infection has taken hold, it's moving so progressively that uh, the antibiotics cannot get ahead of the infection. The flesh eating virus is, as its name implies, extraordinarily deadly because it eats a human being from the inside out. Then, within the same year, this relatively unheard of affliction suddenly appears again and again in the Atlanta area, followed by two more in South Carolina. And when we look at these five known cases of the outbreak on a map, a startling revelation is made. When you've got a certain region that now starts to have not one, not two, but you start getting into four or five and maybe even an outbreak of cases, then add in the fact that there's a CDC facility not too far away. You have to ask, is there a connection? The CDC is in charge of infectious disease prevention and awareness in America, perhaps the most advanced institute of its kind. But shortly after the outbreak of flesh-eating bacteria, the government announces a congressional investigation of reported air leaks and safety lapses that occurred in February of 2012, just three months before Amy Copeland's accident. The CDC liked to conduct tours. There was a reverse of an air flow. And so the CDC admitted that a virus that was being tested might have escaped into a corridor where a tour was taking place. Was this bacteria created as a weapon and released by accident? If not, then why has the recent government decision to move Plum Island resulted in a new location further from the population centers of the East Coast, but a location closer to the rest of us? Coming up next, what government plan for Plum Island could create the biggest biological threat in American history? And how could it bring disease right into your very home? Join us when we return. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. The time to act is now. There are three simple steps you can take to unseal the truth. Follow on Twitter. Follow the unsealed Twitter feed to receive breaking news of the latest conspiracies as they develop. Tell your story. What did you see that you shouldn't have? The government's known about it all along. Why has nobody told us? Upload stories and pictures to our interactive map. Join the movement. Get the unsealed bracelet and the unique code hidden underneath to access exclusive content. Stop living in the dark. It is definitely coming this way. Get involved in the fight to unseal the truth. Now. Following the discovery of monsters and mysterious bodies comes the announcement that Plum Island intends to relocate its facility. The new location, Manhattan, Kansas, right in the heart of cattle country. According to the government, the lab is moving for financial reasons. But relocating such a facility in the breadbasket of America could have catastrophic consequences. So what if one of these pathogens got into our meat supply? You're in the middle of Tornado Alley. What if nature decides to rip a tornado through that building? Could an outbreak spread through the nation resulting in a catastrophic death toll? If the stories of Plum Island are true, we may find out, with each of us, an unwilling participant in the experiment. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Oh!